Welcome everyone to the Bullish Entrepreneur Podcast and thank you for tuning in. We are in episode three guys and I can't believe it but we're already here. Thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for all the support, the engagement, everything that you guys bring to the table to help us bring out better content for you. And be sure to check out the Bullish Entrepreneur YouTube channel and also listen to us on iTunes and Spotify for all our latest content. Today we're going to be having our first interviewee yes. of the Bullish Entrepreneur Podcast. His name is Jalen Jones, mm -hmm. born and bred in Birmingham, Alabama, came down to the University of Miami, yes. the U. Shout out to all of our Miami people listening yeah. and watching. You already know. Today, we're going to be getting into the vulnerabilities, the failures, mm -hmm. the successes, and what really is it that helps build character, Yes. right? Because people are always scared of failing, but the failures are what build character. And it's not the wins that make you successful, mm. but the failures that catapult you to your destination faster than the wins. Definitely, man. You kind of get blindsided by the wins if you have mm -hmm. too many, right? It's like the winner's high. You get stuck on it and everything else doesn't matter and you feel like you're at the top of your game until you have that one moment where you lose and you're devastated. You don't know how to handle it, right? Because you haven't mm -hmm. been there before in such a long time. And that's what we would like to you know, showcase a lot is the fact that it's stepping stones, grinds that you have to go through points of vulnerability that you have to deal with in order to really reach your greatest potential. And I believe that Jalen Jones is the perfect example for that for our first interview. Definitely, man. Like, honestly, it's about breaking the mental barriers that we yes. have. We set these mental barriers for ourselves. They don't exist. But because our ego is so tied into with failing, we don't want to fail mm -hmm. or be known as a failure. We decide not to take the first step to begin with. Exactly. It's about overcoming those early on. That way, as you get older, you don't keep falling into the same routine mm -hmm. of fearing to do things or fearing to get something started that may actually benefit you and your family in the long run. Yeah, breaking those generational curses, another topic we'll be talking about in this interview. So I hope you guys are ready. We have a lot in store for you. Be sure to check us out on all those platforms we mentioned earlier. Again, YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. Hope you all enjoy. Enjoy the podcast, guys. So yeah, we have Jalen Jones here today. And so Jalen, man, talk to us who Jalen Jones is. How did you come to be? What was your childhood like, man? Take us from the top. Uh, originally, I'm just a kid from a small town in Alabama by the name of Alabasta, Alabama. Originally moved from Mobile. I uh, come from a family of four. Three mother, my father and my brother were all engineers. My brother was civil engineering. My mom was mechanical. And my father was electrical engineering. So okay. uh, I think just coming from that background, just electrical engineers, just go getters. Yeah. You know, I basically wanted to go out and just create my own legacy, meaning that the health and fitness industry was the one for me. You know, I told my parents the day that I came to school, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> when I declared where school I was coming to, I said that I did not want to do engineering. I basically need to go out and start my own legacy. You guys can't create my, my tail for me. I need to create my chapter day by day for myself. Right. So, so, so like, how did they take to that? Because you just mentioned that your mom, your dad, your grandfather as well, you said? Mm -hmm, as well. And, and your brother are all engineers. So, I mean, how did they take to that? Were they, you know, supporting of it? Did they see it as you kind of breaking that, you know, <laughs> like breaking that cycle mm -hmm. of, of saying, hey, I'm not going to be an engineer, although all of you chose different engineerial paths. Mm -hmm. I want to do something completely different. How did they respond to that? Uh, I think with my family was more so they've always been supportive of whatever anyone has wanted to do. Meaning that if you want to go become a pilot, like my brother's doing right now, becoming a pilot, as long as you're doing things for yourself and for those around you mm -hmm. and you're helping out yourself and you want to be better yourself day in and day out, they've always been the one to support you. That's now, do they have some kind of question to myself about why I wanted to change my, my major and my route in life? Yes, but it was more so the fact that, okay, this is what you want to do, but we're still going to be here to support you along the way. And I think it's more so the fact that they were saying that, hey, this is, they've always been realistic with me. They've never sugarcoated a day in my life mm -hmm. with me. That's so I important. think that... That's good. Keeping that stigma as a kid, that structure, those values as a kid of saying, being realistic with your kid, not sugarcoating things now in this day and age with your children. They were always been behind my back and they supported me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, I just graduated from the University of Miami yeah, back in May. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm fresh across, you know, but it's, it's, it's a great feeling crossing that stage. And I feel, I feel like that everything I've done from then until now has worked me up to where I'm supposed to be at today in life. Nothing about me has, is, is given. You know, everything that we work for ourselves. This is, this is happening for a reason. Yeah. So I take that, that same mindset that they gave me, that they instilled in me when I was a kid, and I keep it going day in and day out, operating at 
Definitely. And see that that that's awesome because a lot of people like that's actually a blessed background for you to have. You know, like personally coming from a family where only my mom was the graduate. My mm -hmm. mom my mom was the only graduate in the entire family of thirty people. And that, you know, coming out of college in Colombia, mm -hmm. that was something big and to be a proud of, right? And when I was a kid growing up, you know, that's something that everyone everyone focused on me. Since I was a son of the only woman in the family to graduate college, mm -hmm. everyone had the pressure on me reaching those same goals. And I also chose to take the entrepreneurial route. You know, you were blessed that you had a, a family around you that all went to college, all graduated, which not a lot of people can resonate with. Yeah. But also, you know, they think that just because you've had that support, that it was an easy route, right? So the struggle is really what, you know, what, what were the mental struggles that you had to go through growing up as a kid? I think growing up as a kid, you experience life. Yeah. Life hits you. And, you know, as a kid, we're painting this golden picture. And this golden picture that nothing is wrong. Mm -hmm. But the minute you get older and your mind switches over and your perspective switches, you see the world for really what it is. Mm -hmm. You think that family members are always there for you, whatever it may be. Family members, you got your back. Parents are always great, this and that. You know, everyone goes through their own problems. So don't ever think that whatever you're doing in life, everyone is going through some sort of problem in life yeah. with what they're doing. But no matter what social media may portray about it in their life, everyone goes through things. So I think that the way that you look at those experiences and those life changes in general, your perspective upon that can shift. Mm -hmm. Meaning that way, the way you look at what you've done through, what you've gone through, what you've been through, mm -hmm. that can change. It's not set in stone. No one has written, this, no one has a written timeline written out for themselves. Yeah, that is true. And, and that, that's something big, actually, because we were talking earlier, you know, and you were saying that as a kid, you were called Big Chunky. Yeah. So contrary to this, you know, great physique that Jalen has, and actually he trains us now, right? Where every week we're on his Telegram chat, he gives us homework to do at night on workouts in the morning as well. And inspirational quotes, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of lift my day when I'm able to open my phone and you're actually awake before I am. <laughs> yeah. and things going. So uh, that's tough because, you know, we are our own circle of friends. So talk about that, how being called Big Chunky as a kid really motivated you to go into fitness. Oh, so about that. So just a little backstory about how I was received the name of Big Chunky. So I came out of the womb eight pounds and six ounces and I was instantly given the name of Big Chunky. <laughs> so I think just resonate that same kind of perspective around my head about what my name was. It always kept my family members talking about me and joking with me. That always stuck in between my head. Mm -hmm. So once as high life went on, I came, became to come into sports, whether it be middle school or high school, I think just always taking care of my body and always feeling one with myself, not necessarily yes. stepping worried about the weight that I'm going through, feeling comfortable in my own skin. I think that's what has driven me to this point. And today. that's a hard thing to do, like especially nowadays where, you know, the idea of how you look, your 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 physical physique, beauty itself, it's not in the, the the eye of the beholder anymore. It's basically the standard based off, you know, the magazines, media, social media, TV uh uh shows and now, nowadays all these reality TV shows <laughs> with, you know, women supposedly supposed to look a, a different a, a certain way, the dating shows and like, even men, like men are yeah. supposed to be physical, you know, yeah. this physically presence that we have, we, that we have to have, right? We have to look strong or have a certain persona. Yeah. And especially mm -hmm. when you go into the gym, you see guys lifting crazy amount of weights and then you try to fit that, right? That's called ego lifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like Jalen actually brought up to us. So how, how have you tried to change that perspective in the fitness game? I basically have tried to change that perspective just by keeping it very as authentic as possible. Mm -hmm. Meaning that what you get from me is the realest of the realest. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to fluff you. Is this journey going to be easy? No. Yeah. Is life easy? No. Mm -hmm. If it's worth it, it's worth going for. I've always had that mindset about going everything, go 120% with everything that you do in life. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you bring the authenticity about fitness in general, health and nutrition, then it gets better. I always tell my clients, it's not about diet, it's about lifestyle changes. Mm. If you can go one to two days without working out, mm -hmm. running, or eating correctly, and you're mad at yourself, or you're infuriated by what you're doing and put into your body, that has become a lifestyle change at that point. So you can get that same mindset and that same aspect around what you're trying to do, accomplish in and out of that gym, it will change your life for the better tenfold outside of there. And, and that's interesting because that goes right into the discipline piece, right? Mm. So a lot of people don't really understand discipline as something that, you know, they're, they're saying, hey, tomorrow I have these tasks to do and they'll set a reminder for themselves. Mm -hmm. Compare that to actual discipline of something that you said, you know, you didn't go to the gym today, so you get mad at yourself, you mm -hmm. get frustrated because something in you is telling you, hey, go out and do this. Mm -hmm. What gets you to that point? Uh, I think basically getting me to that point is just understand that we are what we eat. Your body is your temple. So what you put into here is what you get out. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you want that eight pack, if you want that nice glutes, the nice butt, the nice thighs, the nice toned <laughs> waist, whatever it may be that you decide to take 
from out of that gym, you are what you get out of it. Mm. So therefore, if you're going around and looking at fake information, you're getting a whole lot of fluff. So therefore, you have to know who you're getting the information from and know what you're putting it towards. That this key is the biggest factor when it comes to fitness and lifestyle in general. Mm -hmm. If you have no discipline, if you have no structure or any foundational core values, you have already messed up. Mm -hmm. So how do you tailor the message, right? Like you, you said you have clients and, and, you're, and when you're training them, when you're talking about discipline, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've experienced, you know, certain people just kind of not necessarily turn their nose up to you mm -hmm. when you bring up the topic, but more so they kind of like cringe it because they're like, oh, here we go. You hear you <laughs> talking about discipline. So how do you tailor the message to specific people? Because everybody has, you know, their own learning curve. They have to get, uh, mm -hmm. get across or get over. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how do you tailor the message specifically for a specific person so that they can receive it well? Perfect. So the way I deal with it, I take each, each base, each client by client is basically I look at it as I tell everyone the same thing. This is your race. So running at your own pace. It's a mm -hmm. marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. so if you try to sprint this thing out, you're going to quit and you're going to have a relapse. Mm -hmm. We don't have relapses mm -hmm. around here. Okay. So <laughs> if you're holding yourself accountable, I'm holding yourself, holding you accountable as well up to those standards that the same energy that you came into me with on that day one, if I can keep that same energy in your brain circulating throughout this whole time that you're with me, I got you. I got you locked in. I'm going to get you the results that you deserve to have because mm -hmm. you have worked so hard for. Meaning that if you become disciplined, when you become disciplined, I don't like to use the word if, so yeah. once that change in your brain switches and you get some kind of sense of result and you see that one little attribute result, it gets you hooked mm -hmm. and you want yes. more of it. Yeah. It's like you're running on a high. Yeah. So the minute that I turn your brain to so you see like, oh, wow, I can see my first two pack. <laughs> the minute that I have that first two pack going into place, you're like, okay, I like him. You yeah. know? I want to be with this guy. Yeah. You know, I'm here to make the experience fun. This should, you should not. Mm -hmm. When you come into with me, I look at the gym as a solitude of confinement. Mm -hmm. When you come inside those walls. Everything else outside that walls goes away. You mm -hmm. cut them off. When you're here, you're taking your life back. Yeah. One step at a time. So if you look at it in that way, you come into here, when you come in here, this is a fun experience. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you laugh. Yeah. I'm not going to make you cry, but I'm going to push you to your limit, but I will never over exceed to where you need to be at. Mm -hmm. and, and that's important, I feel like, because a lot of people, you know, when they have personal trainers, they know that their, their trainer is going to push them to the limit, but they see it as, all right, I'm going to go to my trainer. He's going to teach me how you know, to work out in areas of my body that I'm not used to and try different things, but they never really think of it as a mindset, thing, mm. right? The trainer's just kind of like, hey, make it here on time, be here on time because we got to start a workout by this certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. You're kind of telling them, hey, you need to make a whole lifestyle change. There's, mm -hmm. there's things that you need to change within you, within your own discipline, within your own mind, and I'm going to help you get there. So you're helping them in self-improvement, mm -hmm. not just in fitness, but self-improvement. That way they can effectively do the workouts that you're giving them on a consistent basis, right? So what, what I really think that the audience needs to hear on, on this part is understanding that to get to your level, you have to build a certain mindset, that discipline that we spoke about in episode two. Mm -hmm. And that's something that really drives anybody, right? You said it's a lifestyle, train, a lifestyle change. And by you mentioning that's a lifestyle change, that's something that people can take and now focus on other parts of their lives, mm -hmm. not just in fitness. So it starts within the gym and then it expands outward. You're working from the inside out. Bingo. And as you talk about that, to finally come to this point, you said, you know, once you come in here, nothing matters outside of these walls. You're in the gym and we're handling our work and our business here. Mm -hmm. The mental framework, the discipline, the physicality of it. That sounds like a very athletic approach. And, and being that we played, we all played sports yeah. before, you know, how did being an athlete at a young age, working with a team and playing with a team help you develop that mindset? Because I feel like a lot of people need to understand this and can even apply it with their own kids and getting them involved early. Oh, perfect. So prior to beginning to that, I'm going to give you guys a little background of where I came from mm -hmm. when it comes to athletics. So previously back in middle school, I've always been this big basketball fanatic. Mm -hmm. Never wanted to do anything else but play basketball. So I get to high school my freshman year, and uh, my brother and my mom, they decided to pick on me, of course. And, you know, they said, Jalen, you can't play basketball this year unless you run track and field. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go up a freshman year in high school and decided to play, try to run track and field. Ended up being the number one freshman in the state. Oh, wow. So On accident. On accident. <laughs> on accident. Wow. On accident. Wow. So, you know, I started doing AAU, uh, AAU track and field during the summertime. Started getting more exposure here and there. And slowly but surely, basketball was up here. And track started to slowly make its rise on up. Sophomore year, I ended up coming up. I ended up being number three in the nation. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I can really make a shot at this. Yeah. And I think once that I saw that aspect about I actually have a, I can actually make something out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I said to myself, hey, all right, keep going for that full scholarship. Repay those who have paid the way for you. And when I realized that, that's been my mindset ever since. 
I love that. repaying those who have paved the way. Yeah. I've done it. I wouldn't say I've done it all, but I've ran on three different USA teams. Wow. I've ran over in Ukraine. I've USA, ran, you're talking about USA Olympic, Olympic teams. teams. The Junior Olympic teams, correct. Olympic okay. teams. So just so you guys get an idea of the athlete that we have here, right? <laughs> and, and you know, it, it takes a lot to get there. And you started mm -hmm. off talking about your childhood, how that helped you develop, you know, the mindset and discipline you have and how your parents offer you that support, whether mm -hmm. you decided to steer away from the engineering aspect to really bringing it back and giving you the support in anything you wanted to do. Clearly, it mm -hmm. helped you get to the point where you are now and be able to now progress. Mm -hmm. 100%. Awesome, man. So, you know, I understand that you, 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 because we spoke before, right? And you were talking about the track and field journey, and then everything seemed so great, seemed so, you know, perfect, mm -hmm. the scholarship. You had this, this plan, mm -hmm. and it was set. You were paving your way, right? Mm -hmm. Making your way, essentially, you know, <laughs> Your parents led you that way, even though, you know, they're engineers. They're saying, if you want to play basketball, you got to run track, mm -hmm. not even knowing what they're doing for you. <laughs> you don't crazy. even know what they're doing for you. You find this newfound love, right? And then all of a sudden it's gone. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Oh, uh, wow. That's a, that's a deep one. Yeah. Um, so actually, actually, I was a recruiter to come to University of Miami and I was always at high school. I know had never had any injuries come to college. Love everything I did about it. I learned all the aspects about it. But my junior year in college, I, uh, I ruptured my Achilles. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the biggest mental setback, but it was also the most biggest life-changing thing that ever happened to me in my life. The day that I tore my Achilles was probably the most biggest blessing in disguise I've ever really? seen in my life. Because most people see something like that as totally drastic, but you see it as a blessing. Yeah, yeah especially in starting to cut you off, but you, you, you're taking it to a point where you ran for the U.S. Olympic team three times, right? And you were going to make it onto an official team and doing all of these things. How did that affect your identity in that aspect? Oh, man. Major identity crisis. Okay. I think that uh, the day that I decided to hang up my track and field spikes, I felt like I was no one anymore. I felt mm -hmm. like that I had literally just stopped doing everything. I felt like everyone, because we always paint these pictures in our brains about how everyone else sees us. Mm -hmm. And that's what kills our brains. So you always have to see yourself. How do you see you? Mm -hmm. The day that you visualize yourself about how you see yourself and the day that it matches up with those the way that other people see you, that's when you know you've done everything correct in your own power. So I believe that the identity, that identity crisis, it shut me back, yes, but trials and tribulations. Nothing great, nothing great can come from it if you don't learn from it. Yeah. Mm. Perspective drives performance, like I told you guys multiple times. The day that you change your mindset about life in general, your perspective on life gets better. Mm -hmm. So if you can change your perspective about everything that you're possibly doing, whether it be in life, in schoolwork, whatever maybe your financial, your emotional relationship, whatever it is, you can change your perspective on that. I think that my mother always, don't get me wrong, I've always had people around me to hold me true mm -hmm. to what I have done. Mm -hmm. Accountability. 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 It's key. <laughs> Found a key. Foundation. Yeah. Have a great foundation behind you. Those who support you and want you to succeed day in and day out, doing everything you want to be doing in life. Yes, definitely. So that's like really amazing, right? Like you, you, you had this whole plan charted out for you with, with track and field. You tear your Achilles. You bounce back. Mm -hmm. And you find this new outlet, this new avenue that, you know, you're now soaring in. But in the same sense, you didn't really tackle the idea of the struggle mm -hmm. it really takes to make that rebound move, right? Like, mm -hmm. for me, for example, I had this idea of playing college football at the, uh, uh, the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. I don't get accepted because I wasn't the best SAT taker. And I get into like Same, this, by the way. Bro, I get into like this, like <laughs> I barely got in crazy, like depression. Mm -hmm. I feel like you, remember Boy Meets World. Mm -hmm. Yes, you remember uh, Eric Matthews, Corey's older brother. Yeah, <laughs> after he gets out of high school, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know if he wants to go to college. He's mm -hmm. sitting on the couch in his robe and underwear, watching TV, cartoons, and cereal. You know, that was me, bro. Like mm -hmm. literally, legit, like on the couch eating cereal, playing video games, bro. At one point. My mom would come home and she'd just be like, Abdul, what are you doing? You're like wasting away. So for me, it took a while to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And once I finally did, you know, being that I had support and stuff like that, it was, you know, very beneficial for me. But for you now, like, how are you able to call yourself out of that? Because it's it sucks you in like quicksand, right? So how are you able to get out of that? Like, talk about the struggles, the mental, you know, adversities, the, in the internal conflict. Tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, with that, with that tear, that tear my killings, I think more so with that, it literally brought me back to ground zero. Okay. It literally showed me how to crawl before I can walk. Okay. I didn't know how to walk. I had to relearn how to walk all over again. 
So I think coming from that aspect of that, I was very depressed. For my first two weeks after my Achilles, I cried in the shower repeatedly over and over and over again. I'm not here to say that the struggle is not real. Of course, it's hard. It's going to be hard. But I think that staying true to who I was as a person, not letting myself give up on myself and my life, mm -hmm. not on just me, but the generation next to come. <laughs> that goes into what I'm saying about my purpose is bigger than who I am. Mm -hmm. Meaning that yes. I couldn't give up yes. on who, I couldn't give up on those that come behind me because if I gave up on myself, I would be giving up on the next generation to come. Mm -hmm. so I think keeping that same mental aspect, that barrier right there in my brain, like yes, it was extremely tough yeah. to come back from daily, day in, day out, previous going to rehab, Going there, seeing everyone else being able to walk, taking walking for granted, seeing all of my teammates going outside, running, excelling at track and field, and I'm not excelling myself. Mm -hmm. That in anyone's brain can kill, can, can kill anyone. Mm -hmm. But I think more so just being there, supporting them, just making sure, hey, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep climbing that hill. Once you've hit rock bottom, you can't go any lower. Yeah. There's only up from there. Yeah. So I think when you put that glass ceiling right there, you have to break through it. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if I was going to get stopped right there, then now you got I would not be sitting in this chair today. Hmm. And and that's powerful, man. And honestly, it's something the audience will resonate with because you know, you're not just saying you, you got injured, you came back, and then you started going into this fitness entrepreneurial journey and everything has been great from there. You know, it's been struggles even in your entrepreneurial journey. Mm -hmm. But taking it back from the moment where you had that loss of identity, right? You were that athlete who was doing it and, and going through the struggles you said, you know, crying in the shower, like those are things we all can relate to whether we want to admit it or not, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And that's where it comes into the consent of vulnerability, mm -hmm. right? You have to give yourself consent, like we were speaking about the other day, to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Give yourself consent to be vulnerable. If you don't give yourself that consent to be vulnerable, you're never going to express the way you feel. And that's something that Jalen told us yeah. the last time that we were talking on our interview for this podcast is, you know, getting to know more about each other, although we were already friends, you know, there's things that we haven't heard about you until now, mm -hmm. or even that last interview, we learned a lot. So <laughs> every, every interaction we have is just that vulnerability that's being led out there and showing people that you can break out of it. It's just all within you in your mind. Bingo. And it's a great way to put it, right? You know, the idea of consent, because it's like, mm. it's not an automatic switch. You know, mm. we all tend to, you know, coddle ourselves in the sense of our emotions right making sure that they're like super protected you don't want anybody <laughs> to feel like they can take advantage of yes. you and it's like in yes. order for you to really understand yourself truly you have to break down the own your own mm. wall that you put up for yourself right mm -hmm. and it's like using the term consent because it's all about the mind play right yeah. if you, certain words trigger certain reactions and consent in my opinion is like the key for the lock that you use to unlock that vault or, you know, powerful, used to unlock bro. that door that um, that then unleashes your true nature, your true mm -hmm. ability to really shine and really accept you for who you are. So I just I just wanted to point that out because, you know, it's it's real hard to understand how to do these type of things. And, you know, it, it, it's it's all a matter of how you train your mind. If you if you use certain key words like consent, you know, like like forgiveness, like love, like humble, like those type of words, those terminologies help you feel more comfortable in yourself to be able to, like, relate and open up with other people. Therefore, you can learn from those people mm. and in turn figure out a way in which you can help yourself grow. Mm. And, and you see, like, the words you guys just spoke right now and, and the way this interaction has been going has just been flowing. And that's something that people really got to understand, that vulnerability takes time to become this fluent. Yeah. You have to slowly peel back those layers and give yourself consent to speak about it to yourself, maybe in front of a mirror, in mm -hmm. front of your phone. <laughs> something I started, you know, a year ago was whenever I, feel re I felt really down where no one can really understand me or hear me out, I'll turn my phone on camera on the selfie mode and I'll just talk oh. and then I'll, I'll watch that video afterwards and it'll be while I was driving. So I'll just put the video, uh, the, the phone up yeah, you're and yeah, I'll have it mounted on the AC and I'm not looking at it, but I'm just driving and, you know, just talking about how I'm, how I'm feeling, what I think, you know, what I'm thinking of myself, mm -hmm. what are the things that bothers me as Bondar Sabai? What is it that really is pulling me back from reaching my full potential? Mm -hmm. and being able to talk amongst ourselves now and elevate from talking to my phone to talking now to a camera <laughs> that's reaching out to millions of people yeah. and you know some of you guys that you know a lot of people don't really understand but you know these are Abdul I've known since the fourth grade Jalen I just met about a year and a half ago yeah, and we already we, feel like we already <laughs> feel like we've known each other forever right yeah, so exactly. although I've known Abdul for such a long time you know we all needed that vulnerability piece to come in and really help us open up 
our mindsets and think differently. So Jalen, you know, you spoke about the cursed mindset mm -hmm. and creating something that was a bigger purpose, right? For your bigger purpose. A lot of people don't know about building a legacy, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, or finding that bigger purpose that's bigger than themselves. A lot of people can associate that to God, you know, being that bigger purpose that they're, they're going to reach or family building that legacy of, for generations to come, mm -hmm. not just your kids, but your grandkids, the kids that come after those kids, right? It's something that they're going to say, Hey, granddaddy Jalen planted the seed for us to now enjoy the fruits of his labor, whether it be properties that you were able to, you know, invest in and help them now when they go to college, not have to worry about housing, <laughs> right? Yeah. And dorms and all these <laughs> things. These are things that take away from our money now. Exactly. Why are we going to keep instilling that and only worrying about us and our kids if our future generations are going to have to struggle through the same thing. Correct. So talk more about building that legacy and finding that bigger purpose. Very perfect. So I think prior to even creating that legacy, you basically have to create that mindset first, that mindset to be able to understand that mm -hmm. what it takes to go in to create that legacy. That's key. Meaning that everything that goes in here, we filter out the bad and we keep in the good. <laughs> That's what I believe about it. So therefore, if you're funding your mind every day in and day out with different personal development items from the correct sources, you are on the right path. You have to understand what it takes to be able to go go beyond what it is mm -hmm. to create that legacy. Therefore, meaning that growth only occurs in an uncomfortable zone. You have to become comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think prior to me even starting my journey, that was what it took first. Like I said, prior to me even starting my own business, I took a year out of my lifetime to just to firstly develop my mindset and also my body. So therefore, when I brought it to clients' attention, they knew what they were getting from me. They saw the results. They saw the mindset that it took to get there. That's why before I even wanted anyone to buy into what I was producing, you have to see the results. And I wanted to see the results myself. That's how the kind of person I am. I want people to see the, the real authentic, authenticity about what I'm trying to do here. Awesome. Going into that generational curse, meaning that you have to go on things that stem from our generations, previous generations will come back to haunt us later on in life mm. if we do not take care of them prior to getting there. And, and I don't think, sorry to cut you off really quick before you continue that thought, I don't think anybody's ever spoken about this on camera. Nah. I don't think that's anything I've heard in any social media platform that I've watched a ton of videos, especially, you know, imagine the bullish entrepreneur. Yeah. We try to fill our minds with as much knowledge and positivity. Mm. And no one's really mentioned breaking generational curses. Mm -hmm. Talk to us more about that. Breaking generational curses. I think that along that line, myself, not going to go into detail about myself, but more so of Say if you or your parents have a divorce or whether maybe someone's not the most upholding within a relationship, within a marriage, I believe that you have to, that, that same stigma, that same stigma would generate down to each generation that comes to the next, to the next, to the next, whether it be money crisis, money issues. If you have, when you're a kid, if you have family members or parents who are money conscious or always saying okay we can't afford that meaning that we don't have the funds to take care of this mm -hmm. the order you get you will say you will still have that same stigma <laughs> about the way money works mm -hmm. money is a tool and if you never get that out of your mindset about how it's supposed to be used and not use you and not working for it mm -hmm. you will keep that same mindset going in day in and day out until you have your next generation of kids coming through wow that's 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 amazing. And it's, and it's, it blew my mind. It's crazy because we're, <laughs> we're talking about planting seeds, right? But mm -hmm. we're 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 using the statement and the terminology, and we're we're associating it with positivity. Mm -hmm. But now we're talking about it on the other side of the spectrum, right? How how negative seeds, if planted, mm -hmm. can have an impact and lead into what you were mentioning about generational curses. Correct. So. Dang, I, I can't lie to you, man. Like now that I think about that, I, it, it all it, it makes me think about my family, right? Yeah, <laughs> and like what, like and like how I was raised and some of the negativity that I, I I've seen in my in my own household growing up as a kid. You know, um, you were talking about you know hypothetically about you know divorces and stuff like that. Well, I'm actually a product of that. Uh, a split household. Mm -hmm. I am as well, by yeah. the way. <laughs> so, so I, I currently know. going through it, by the way. <laughs> well, then there you have it. So you know, so you it. know, you you can actually relate to and see firsthand what it what it what it does and the effect that it has. Like me personally, I always think about me starting my own family mm -hmm. and and the husband mm -hmm. I want to be and the father I want to be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know for certain mm -hmm. that for one. I guess, you know, I, I can I can accredit the, the impact that, you know, my parents splitting up when I was young. It has an effect on why I probably have my commitment issues because I'm always mm. so super yeah. like stringent and like extra like cautious because I don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. revert back to that type of situation. Yes. I want to make and it's, it's, it's not perfectionism, but it's like 
I think I overthink it. I don't know what it is, but I'm working on it still. <laughs> but it's like, it's just, it's just trying to find a comfort zone to then say, all right, now I'm ready to do this. But it's all a growing process. But yes, definitely. Those seeds that are planted that are negative, it does have an impact. And, you know, it's okay to understand that they do have that impact. Like, don't, don't shun from it. Like, the, when you do that, that's when you plant another seed, right? And it just perpetuates the negativity and it just goes on a long snowball down effect line. yeah the negativity yeah <laughs> and it's just like it just keeps on going and and to tie back into the sorry to cut you off no, as no, well deal with the skeletons in your closet oh, before yeah, yes. any more skeletons can be found in there <laughs> deal with them you cannot be a public success and a private failure ah. two and two do not go in together okay mm -hmm. understanding that i need to deal with my baggage before i bring it to the next relationship otherwise my kids would deal with those as well mm -hmm. Meaning that the thing, the stigma that you bring upon your kids, yes, they will make them grow up a lot sooner than more other kids will yeah. be, but they still have different things around their mind. They have mental barriers created. Yeah. And that's what was my problem. I had different mental barriers created around my brain set, thinking that I couldn't accomplish the things that I wanted to do in my life. Yeah. So I had to go in there basically and just rewire my whole mindset. I always tell myself, look back to a year ago today to where you were and see how far you have come. It's funny, it's funny you say that because in the last episode when we were talking about the vulnerability aspect, I literally said that. I said if I, the person who I was a few years back uh, to the person I am today, my level of vulnerability has skyrocketed. Yes. And when I say that, I say that with, you know, this idea that, you know, I'm making progress. You know, I'm not, I'm not moving. Like you said, it's, it's your own race. You, you focus on your lane and your lane only. Mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, don't worry about what everybody else's perception of you is, you know, just focus on what you need to do to make you right. Correct. And in turn, you would impact everybody that's around you. Why? Because you're solid within yourself. And naturally, people want to gravitate to that. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Correct. So it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. I love this talk so far, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot help yourself. You cannot help anyone else unless you help yourself. Yes. yes. You have to change your mindset first and about who you are as a person before you can go out and try to change other people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just to tie it exactly into what you just said, you know, I met somebody on actually a couple that my girl and I met on a cruise ship that we were just on on vacation. And this couple, you know, it's crazy that we went in with the intention of just going on vacation, having mm -hmm. fun. And we met somebody who was just like minded, <laughs> exactly like us. Right. They thought the same ways and ultimately were go getters. They wanted to go out and get things done. And in understanding that and meeting them, you know, the guy's name is Sam, actually. Shout out to Sam. Sam. Level Up Podcast. <laughs> awesome. Check it out. And, you know, Sam actually told me this airplane analogy, which is ties exactly into what you just said. And it's. You know, when you go into a plane, they tell you to put your oxygen mask first. Mm -hmm. If obviously the plane is in danger and, you know, windows break or whatever, put on your oxygen mask first. Because if you try to help out the person next to you without putting yours on first, you might pass out and not be able to help the person next to you who doesn't know how to do it, which could be a kid, an older person, or just somebody that's, that freaks out in the moment and just freezes, doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So it's about helping yourself first before you can help out somebody else. Because you'll pass out in the process, mm -hmm. give your own life and that person's life because you didn't choose to put your mask on first. 100%. So going back into it, right, we're going to talk about and your journey, how you left college, right? You graduated. What really made you change your perspective when you finally got injured, right? You came mm -hmm. back and now you're ready to start your entrepreneurial journey and go into fitness and start building a clientele because mm -hmm. now you start, you have to start making money, right? You graduated 100%. your degree. That paper itself is not going to make you money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what, what got you to that point? Talk to us, man. I think more so right there, uh, back when I was in my senior in college, I actually got introduced into trading. Uh, I got introduced to a network marketing company and I uh, started doing trading and I liked what I was doing, but I didn't like the way that I was going about it. Mm. You know, trading, the one thing about it is I love the knowledge gap that it comes with. It makes you level up your mindset in ways that you never mm -hmm. thought you could fathom. And let's be specific on that trading. We're talking about in trading foreign exchange currencies, yeah. stocks, commodities like gold. You know, that, that's the kind of trading we're talking about, which has to do with if you have Wi-Fi and you're able to use your computers, chart analysis and these different things, just so everybody gets a perspective as to what we're talking about in oh, trading. Right. right. So I think coming from that mindset, uh, I think if you're dealing with money like that on a daily basis and you're losing money, mm -hmm. it makes you fortify your mindset. Yeah. So I think starting with that and doing a lot of personal development, personal development, day in and day out, read books, love books, 
become to fall in love with books. They yeah. will become your best friend. Even if you hate them. Even yeah. if you hate them. I hated them growing up as a kid. You could not pay me $100 million to read one. Oh, I'll tell you that. That's you could not truth. pay me. That is the, God is the truth. <laughs> and that's it. Shit. I tell you, because I, I swear, I, to this day, even now, I still struggle with it. That's it's, I'm just not a big reader, but at some point, you have to realize that if you, if you, if you, Fail to keep educating yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like most of us do at certain certain points in our lives, right? At some point, you just feel like you know it all, and mm -hmm. you just don't want to. You just don't want to continue enhancing your mindset and enhancing your learning curve. Uh, you just, you just no, not enhancing your learning curve, but in, enhancing your ability to absorb knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And then enhancing the learning curve when it comes yes. to learning something new. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's tough, man, because you got to realize that in order to become that person you want to be and enhance yourself in a way in which you want to reach your greatest potential, you have to do these simple things. You have to. You have to. Like, don't get me wrong. Starting out, it was not easy. Yeah. It was not easy. The first year, you never know. You're losing. You're losing. You're going through all these different mental struggles. Why am I losing money within the market? Should I quit? And it has to do with financial management, right? Because if you don't know and you come from a background like you spoke about generational curses, if you come from a family that, let's say, even made a lot of money but didn't know how to manage it, mm -hmm. they also project how they manage their own money onto you. And you think that by making money, it's the same thing as managing money. Bingo. And, right, and somebody can make $10 and the other person make 20, but the person with $10 turn that $10 into much more profit mm -hmm. than that person with $20 may do it, right? Exactly. And it all comes down to the money management. So how did that fall into that process? I think that is all a part of the learning process. Um, I had no idea what I was doing starting out. Luckily, I would not be at this table without these three guys if it wasn't for trading. <laughs> you will meet a lot of different, if you ever decide to bark on trading, foreign exchange currencies, whether it be investing, you will meet a lot of different people who come from different walks of life. Mm -hmm. yes. Like we have, we all do different things. Yeah. He is a trader. I'm a trader and a personal trainer, business owner as well, videography, business owner. So I think coming from different walks of life that it shows you there's more about it. I think that it was more so for my pursuit of financial freedom and becoming mm -hmm. comfortable with that money management skills early on mm -hmm, yeah. that was come from those generational curses. Mm -hmm. That was a big problem of mine. Come from a family with, 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 with that was very, that was wealthy and things happen, you know? So I think that the things that you have to learn from those mistakes that have come from, learn from everyone else's experiences. You don't need to experience it to learn from it. Yeah. So look forward to the future. Therefore, don't wait around until it happens to you. Mm -hmm. And yes. that was the biggest lesson I learned from growing up in general. So coming from that and moving forward, day in and day out, elevating myself, getting around those like-minded people who want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Find your mastermind group and do a background and credit report check on those people. <laughs> you don't want them feeding the wrong information. If you're never holding yourself accountable, they should be there to hold you accountable. Yes. If I do not post homework in our telegram, in my telegram, our telegram group chat at nighttime, someone is on my butt yeah. about not posting it. Yeah. So I think that just holding people, hey, did you read your book today? Hey, did you do this today? Hey, did you get this many clients today? Did you do this? Are you doing something to better yourself? That bigger, that statement right there, it will hold you accountable and go way down the road. Yes. Like, I think sometimes back, like, I feel like I've known these guys for years since we came out of the room. I've known them for maybe a year and a, a year and a month now. Yeah. But the way that we have, the way that we've held ourselves accountable along mm -hmm. this whole journey and we've grown, we're growing. Like I said, we look back a year ago today, we were not right here. Trust me. We were <laughs> not right here. <laughs> we had no idea what we're doing. We still don't have an idea what we're doing, but we're working day in and day out to reach our ultimate purpose. So I believe that if you surround yourself with those individuals and those individuals, they will get you where you need to be at and they will elevate you along that journey. Most definitely. And, and something that to point out in exactly what you said there is we don't know what we're doing, but we're somehow getting things done. Bingo. And that's what, what do people need to understand is it's not meaning I have no clue about trading and I'm just going to go into trading. No, it's we did all our research. Yes. We did everything that we need to do, including into fitness, him becoming an entrepreneur. And he built up about 20 clients, which we'll get into now, right? About 20 <laughs> clients before even branding, you know, who he is and, and that he even does fitness classes and in gyms and works out people. So that's something that, you know, you have to understand. It comes from within showing people who you are showing them the real stuff because you wouldn't have gotten those 20 clients unless you would have been who you are, exactly. unless they would have seen your growth because you haven't even branded on social media yet <laughs> and you already have 20 clients. Here and there. You know, you, you, you have people who are cold calling a lot of offices trying to get clients for any uh, business. Right here. <laughs> and, and it's tough, right? It's yeah. tough. Even in trading, like I went through my own struggles in trading for about a year and a half and that has been 
probably the most awakening journey in everything, even starting with this podcast, mm -hmm. where it's more like a journal. We're talking to each other. We're getting things out. Just because we look professional on this set doesn't mean we knew exactly what we were doing. As we go along, we keep an open mind and we say, hey, you know what? This isn't working, but let's switch this up. Mm -hmm. and you know what? Let's change this up right here. Let's fix up the audio here. Let's fix up the visuals. Let's fix your seat a little to the left. <laughs> fix your seat a little to the right. It's... You know, making those, being open-minded, although you don't know overall what you're doing, mm -hmm. You're setting these small goals for yourself and you're achieving them one at a time. So it's, let's get the audio in check. Perfect. Let's get the video in check. Perfect. All right. Now let's go into trading the next morning and focus on trading. All mm -hmm. right. We did it. We got our trades in. We made our money. What's next? All right, fellas, let's go into the gym. Let's work out. Mm -hmm. Even if we're not together, we post screenshots in the chat. This is what we're doing. We're yep. in the gym. We're working out. All right. What are we doing next? And so just following and achieving these small goals taking small profits and wins along the way mm -hmm. lead to this ultimate goal that people consider an overnight success. Something is better than nothing. And you know, it's, I, I hate that term, right? Overnight success. Overnight it's success. just like, I, I, I hear it and I get it, but it always takes a grind. Like yes, there's never does. really just an overnight success. It doesn't success. exist. It's, it really doesn't. It doesn't. Like even people for the lottery, you, you hear people win the lottery a lot of times, right? <laughs> I swear to you, I've witnessed, bro, I've been in line. Kid you not, guys. <laughs> I've been in line for like 15 minutes. Why? This one guy walks out with like 20 tickets. He looks like he's probably about, I don't know, 50, 60 years old. Think about how long he's been doing that. Like, think about every entrepreneur who's out here being successful today. They're not overnight successes. They're just like the guy who's constantly going to the gas station, buying these tickets for the lottery just to make it one time. They're constantly putting forth that effort. That's the journey. The journey is the process to which becomes the so-called overnight success. Yes. It's a long time effort, Ooh. a lifetime commitment. We talked about that in episode two that, yeah. you know, it's a life commitment. Once you make that uh, statement to say, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I want to go out and set my own path. I want to take control of my own life. Mm -hmm. That's not just something you can say and then just leave it at that That's and true. then hope for, uh, <laughs> you know, make a wish on a star or something like <laughs> yeah. that and just hope that it'll come to you one day. No, you got to get in. You got to lace up your boots. You got to yeah. really dig deep have battle scars and then be proud of those scars yes. because they are the representation of your grind to get to where you need to get to. So I'm, I'm sorry if I feel like I'm no. ranting, no, but no. you know, <laughs> when, when you say that, that overnight success thing, it just triggers something in my mind. And, and, that, and that's exactly what it is, right? Because, and even though you hear him use the lottery example, it's not in the sense that like playing the lottery is probably one of the dumbest things anybody can do, right? <laughs> like you said, you're throwing your money, you're throwing your money out and that person who's going is throwing their money at the gas station, hoping, that they're gonna win mm. something, right? Mm -hmm. And in reality, that may never happen, or maybe it might come one day, but what happens is they're leaving, and if they don't win, they become miserable. Yeah. The difference in the entrepreneurial journey is you're taking your hack, right? You're going to the gas station every day. What that mm -hmm. is for you is waking up in the morning, getting your tea, meditating, praying, getting into your mindset, working towards goals, and taking these profits one at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a lottery, you don't ever really win until you win the big price mm. and so what that teaches you to do is be miserable and get lost in your own muck right yeah. like you spoke about so that was a huge point that you brought up and yeah, people man. really need to understand that for sure yeah. and to elaborate back on that one about the gambling gambling back and forth came from a family full of gamblers uh. meaning that do not gamble with your life you get one chance to do this why are you gambling with it true so meaning back yes. to that is if you're going on this, on this entrepreneurial journey, is it easy? No. Is anything life that's in life worth hard? Like, is anything in life that's worth having easy? No, it is not. But I like to tell myself, trust the process, mm -hmm. embrace the process, and a product will follow. So, Bunnar, you mentioned that, you know, Jalen here basically, you know, secured 20, 20 clients without even yeah. really like marketing. And to me, that's like really crazy because I understand that being my, uh, being a videographer and a business owner, mm -hmm. it takes a lot to really put yourself out there and let people know that you have a, pro a professional uh, skill mm -hmm. that you want to offer to, you know, uh, other people. And it's, it's hard to get that message across because one, you may feel like the market is oversaturated or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. But for you, it was, it was almost <laughs> like there was not much you really had to do. So talk about that. Talk about how social media has a specific impact on your entrepreneur journey and how it doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
like like kind of at the same that. time at the same right? time right yeah, yeah it's like a, it's like the balance of, of the scales like which one tips more does is is social media a pro for you or is mm-hmm. it a con for you or is it like somewhere in the middle i don't know I think to, to go to that, I think that it could be a good and a bad at the same time. Okay. But like I said, to revert back, prior to me even getting my first client, I took my first year out to get my results myself. True. Mm-hmm. So yeah. before, proof in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding. And yeah. I believe that me going in and getting my my body and my mindset and my results for myself, that's when people started to realize like, okay, this kid is very knowledgeable what he's doing. He's very authentic about mm-hmm. what he's doing. That was the biggest thing for me, authenticity. Mm-hmm. As people know, people come to me first, you know, it starts out with friends, friend here, friend there. I did not always start out with 20 clients. Yeah. At first it was like, hey man, I see you're doing this on Instagram, like how'd you do that? I'm like, well, it took me this long to get to right here, so I hope you don't want to start right here. <laughs> Crawl before you walk, <laughs> yeah. you know, meaning that you have to start somewhere along this journey. And I believe that once people saw that, what I was putting into there, the authenticity about the value. that, the value. Free value at Free that. Free value. Because you weren't charging and, and you're, you're talking about how you were showing people your growth. You invested Bingo. in yourself. Bingo. Like, I never posted anything. I would literally just post Instagram stories about what I was doing. Oh, I'm working out here. So not necessarily saying you don't know what I'm working out, but you know I'm working out something. Mm-hmm. I'm working on my body. I'm working on my mind. I would always post pictures about books, mm-hmm. books that I'm reading, mm-hmm. growth, whether it be trading. Your perspective. My perspective. And I think what social media today does for people is it shows the negative aspects about it, meaning that, okay... Say if we live somewhere down, oh, I'm down in Las Vegas, mm. down somewhere, you know, living in lavish. I'm not really living it like that. I'm going to show people what's real. Mm. And when people see, they see the realness of it, yes, we still struggle. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to. Yeah. If you don't struggle to get through the growth, then what have you gone, what have you done and what have you gone through? Mm. So I think just showing people just the realness of what it takes to get to where you want to be at in life in general. Like I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Yeah. I'm just getting started out. Yeah. But guess what? I've got my foot in the door now and my pedal is to the metal. It's, it's, <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> because like I, and that's what people don't really understand is that the two main things you pointed out is you need to invest in yourself mm-hmm. is one so how would other people invest in themselves our audience right you would invest in yourself through reading books mm-hmm. um, increasing your knowledge by watching educated documentaries yeah, simple you know, tasks it doesn't you, necessarily mean money right yeah you're like you can watch Netflix but just watch the educational parts of yes. Netflix you can be on YouTube and fill your mind with the positive things that are on YouTube. There's a lot of education on there for free. Right. You know, there's so many things. You can use all these platforms for good or for bad. It's solely up to you. And how you use those resources around you clearly defines who you are. Us three sitting here, we've really turned social media on its head. Yeah. Where we're really <laughs> using the best resources that social media has to offer us while everybody else is saying, hey, stay off of social media. Get off of your phone because you're just poisoning your mind. Mm. And in reality, you're poisoning your mind if you're going through and just watching nonsense on, on social media, yeah. right? Seeing people just post about their lavish lifestyles, the glitz and the glamour. The We're focusing the clout, right? Like people call it, mm. focusing on the clout. We're focused on the grind. Mm-hmm. We're, we're following people who are in it every day, putting their face in the dirt mm-hmm. to make sure it happens, right? And, and going through that grind and embracing it is really what people have to fall in love with. Yeah. Fall in love with the process and not just the glitz and glamour of it all. Exactly. I, I know um, when I sit back and I think of, one, the development of social media and how mm. it's just come about and just taking the world by storm, right? It really has. Like, you literally blink and next thing you know, it's just everywhere. Mm. Like, and, it's, and not in the sense of, oh, because when it started, YouTube... Uh, <laughs> it being just a way that the average person can, you know, showcase themselves to the world. Next thing you know, advertisement getting on it and it's becoming like this huge marketing tool. Mm-hmm. And and now YouTube is starting its own, uh, I believe, uh, TV subscription now. Just like it's Netflix. It's got YouTube TV, just like Netflix. So like it's just Netflix. like, it's amazing. And I'm thinking about this and I'm just like, wow, like who would have thought, right? Like mm-hmm. who would have thought all those possibilities could happen? Same way in which, like you mentioned, how we use the tool as a, a, a positive aspect rather, rather than a negative. Mm-hmm. You said, you know, like you mentioned, you know, people saying stay off of YouTube, you're poisoning your mind. That in itself, that advice in itself is poison. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it's because it's like, why not say, hey, what are you watching there? Uh, what are you looking at? How is that really benefiting you? You know, mm-hmm. there's, there's more to that. You know, there's more to Instagram than just somebody's uh, a car or you know or booty pick or booty pick <laughs> or what, what, what is it Let's called just put it out there because it's true right Thirst a lot trap. of people a lot of, t- talk to us about the fitness industry yeah. part of that right and how has that whole thing that abdul literally just brought up right now 
how does that play into your fitness world? Because I know people love to show their bodies off. Yeah, the duck faces. Line. Yes, Gosh. the duck faces, the poses <laughs> in the gym, you know, and not really lifting weight and showing people the beneficial parts, but saying, hey, I went to the gym today. Look Check how cute out. I look in my, my shorts, my yoga pants, my tank top, whatever the case is. It's great that you say that because the day and age that we're in, you literally could take a picture and it's uploaded to millions of people across the world. And the fact that we live in Miami, out of all places, Miami, <laughs> when that try to tell y'all, the, <laughs> <laughs> Miami, the body image is yeah. all that matters. So when I looked at it, was I was like, okay, what can I go in and do that other people were not doing to basically get it out there a little bit more, mm-hmm. give an educational background with it, educational but simplified down so where everyone can understand it. Mm-hmm. I don't want you having to go to pick up a Webster's dictionary to understand what this word right here may mean. <laughs> yeah. So understand, just you have to be realistic with what you're trying to put out, that value that you're putting out. What can you obtain from something that I'm posting? Are you learning a new move? Are you learning a new technique? How can you implement that into what you're going to be doing for that workout in the upcoming day? Okay. Hmm. Well, that's a great way to put it because, you know, nowadays, not everybody's going to feel like they can relate to you if they can't understand, you know, the terminology, terminology that you're using. Exactly. So it's not necessarily making it, you know, dumbing it down, mm-hmm. but, you know, you keep it in layman's terms, Bingo. you know, broad enough for everybody to kind of grasp. And you make it easily digestible for the mind. That's I think it. that's key. That's it. Um, so yeah, man, I just I just really, really hope that people understand what we're trying to do here because all of this, like we say in the first episode, like we're saying in the second episode, and now what we're about to say now is the, the bullish mindset, man. The bullish mindset that we're trying to drive home to you guys. <laughs> it all revolves around the discipline, the, the, the networking, the, you know, uh, being honest, the vulnerability with yourself. It all helps you keep you in that, you know, upward perpetual motion that makes you soar and, and makes you feel proud of yourself, right? Yes. So, wow, man, this this podcast so far has been really amazing. Really I have to thank started. you guys. Um, but I would love to end on a, on a, on a quote um, from Richard Branson, actually. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, an entrepreneur is someone who jumps off a cliff and is literally building their plane on the way down. Now, mm-hmm. <laughs> I say this because, you know, I feel like this quote resonates with all of us. Yes. Like, it really does. Why? Because... One, we were, we, it took us a while to really make the decision to want to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. right? It, it, it was, it was so difficult in the sense that we were so afraid of the fear. We all, we were all brought up to, you know, think of going to, going to school, going to college, getting out of college to get a job. And yes. that was the stable That's, income that we were looking for. That was the, exactly. the, the stability that we were looking for. Exactly. But the hardest thing for me, and I'm sure you guys can resonate with this as well, was that. Making the decision to be an entrepreneur meant that you had to be okay with falling on your face, essentially taking the L, making sure that, you know, you were prepared to fail, but not in the sense that you were prepared to fail and stay down and beat yourself up about it. But no, prepare to fail and then learn from it. Something we've been harping about throughout this conversation. And, you know, I I understand now more than I have before what that truly means because this journey is not easy. Don't let anyone fool you. It is definitely all that is cracked up to be in the sense of the grind and the struggle that you have to go through. It's built off failures. Yeah, you literally take each failure and instead of, you know, letting it keep you in a muck or a rut, Mm -hmm. treat them as stepping stones. Literally learn from them and then put your best foot forward every time you step on them. Elevate. Yeah, and just keep going up, man. Stay bullish, man. You will get knocked in the face. Yes. It is inevitable. (laughs) It is inevitable. I don't care how you try to go about it, try to Fine, okay, I'm not going to get hit this time. Yeah. You will get hit. Yeah. And, and I'm actually a very stubborn person. So I got punched in the face a thousand times in trading. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand times in trading, right? Yeah. Just to be able to get over that hump. So I mm-hmm. guess you're on that, man. And, you know, you know, the videography thing, it's not easy. Like I said, you know, time and time again, you find people saying, oh, man, well, you do videography. Every, everybody does videography. Yeah, but it's the man behind the camera that matters the most. And for me, that's the biggest struggle, man. Like trying mm. to elevate my mind, try to see how I can be better than the competition. That alone is me getting punched in the face. Constant, constantly, uh, co- constantly over and over, time and time again, I'm trying to figure out new ways to, you know, rewrite the narrative, right? And try to figure out how I can make this formulate for me mm. and not worry about anybody else, not worry about exactly. the competition, but in a sense, Keep them, in, keep them in mind because ultimately you have to. You have to survey your land. So, Jalen, it's been an honor having you here Thank so you far. How, 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 how can people contact you, you know, as far as like Instagram or, you know, just to help, you know, 
get them to know your business. Or even to become one of your clients, right? Because there's a lot of people out there, especially on social media, you know, they they don't just want any personal trainer who's Mm -hmm. going to help them in their workouts, but somebody who's going to help them develop their own mindsets, Mm -hmm. personal growth. So not only are you getting the workouts and the fitness, but you're getting that personal growth out of it. Yes. Or you guys can always contact me at Jalen underscore Jones on Instagram, J double A L E N underscore Jones. Also, pretty soon I will be releasing my website probably within the next month or so. You so you can book online. Feel free to contact me, email me, shoot me a DM, and I will be back in touch with you. And and, <laughs> and see, that's the thing. We'll also put your link also at the bottom of our video on okay. YouTube. And also tag you on Instagram so people can reach you in case they couldn't get that down for whatever reason. We'll have that contact info so you guys can reach them on our video on Instagram. We'll tag them on there as well as on YouTube. It'll be in the description part of the video. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Jalen, so you much brother, for me. doing this. You know, people may think that just because we're cool and we're friends that this was easy to do. And we had to peel a lot of layers back. We had about a four hour interview but amongst the, ourselves the pre-interview the, the pre-interview, pre-interview <laughs> for this podcast was four hours just to be able to release the content that we're giving to you now and in real time and the best pretty much vulnerability that you're going to get from any Bingo. of us right or for anybody and not a lot of people are willing to give what we've been able to give on this podcast especially Jalen. Mm-hmm. thank you so much so just remember guys to build your circle evaluate those around you yes. Yes. And, and really help them hold themselves accountable while they help you hold yourself accountable as exactly. well. Not just where you're doing it on the opposite side, they're holding themselves accountable and you're not taking part in that. Mm-hmm. You need to take part of that action so that you can be part of the change. Yes. Mm-hmm. So thank you all again for joining in and don't forget to grab life by the horns and live, live life bullish. bullish. Take care guys.